everybody, welcome to Drawing with Paolo. Today we're going to draw rain. Yes, a special request on how to draw some rain. But as you know, if we need to draw rain, we need to have somebody in the rain. And so here's that person's head. Here's this person's trapezius muscles. We're going to add a left shoulder here and a right shoulder here. And from there we'll draw some uh, structures to represent his arms. Little circles for elbows, just like this. And the hands that will be fisted on either side, even on the right side over here. And so we're going to draw Wolverine, ladies and gentlemen. Wolverine in the rain. So I'm going to uh, answer two special requests at the same time. How to draw rain and how to draw Wolverine. One of uh, my favorite Marvel characters, of course. So we've got a basic, you know, position of Wolverine. Now we need to do these points that are coming off of his mask on either side. We need to draw a mirror image of this mask just like this. Then what we need to do is draw in his back muscles over here. I'm just fleshing in, fleshing out uh, the drawing a little bit. So to give me an idea of where I want to position my character, I'm drawing these basic shapes. So like for the, ab uh, the abdominal muscles where they're going to be, uh, I'm going to draw where the abs are, where they're supposed to go, his clavicle muscle, his clavicles, but not muscles, they're bones, just over here and the separation in his tricep and his uh, chest muscle and the apse at the top. I mean the trapezius muscle. Here's his tricep, another tricep over here attached to the, bi uh, the shoulder muscle with the bicep on this side. And the other bicep over here. So from here we need to draw his belt, just a little circle. There are different versions of Wolverine's belt. We're going to draw the X belt today. We're going to add a little bit of a suit line over here. And I'm going to draw the classic brown Wolverine costume, not the blue and yellow one. And so there's an opening on his underarm here, just like this, with this classic brown and beige, right? Uh, we can argue that the classic costume is the blue and yellow. It is the long ago classic costume. But this is the uh, now classic because the blue and yellow has sort of come back in style. So. We're going to go here and, and draw in his uh, little uh, costume piece here, a little uh, speedo. And this uh, right thigh will be coming up towards us, so his knee is, is flexed forward. And uh, we're going to put some muscle lines in here, just trying to flesh out where everything is going to go. I'm going to go muscle over here, probably wrap around here later, sort of like that. And I'm using really, really light lines. And that's the trick. You want to use really light lines so that you can erase these whenever you need to. And then we're going to use some darker lines on top of that. Okay, so that's vital. Because if you were to erase with dark lines, you would leave uh, impressions in your paper and we'd be able to see the line. So drawing really lightly helps you out when it's time to erase stuff. All right, I'm going to retrace this head over here a little bit better, make it round a little bit more. Next, see all these lines and our basic lines? We'll erase all this stuff. We don't need these things anymore. So we'll erase that and this, and this, and over here too, on the side of the leg, and on top of the head. And then I'm going to use my paper technique to protect my drawing. And as I rotate my sheet, I'm protecting my drawing from my palm. And so I'm going to start using that right now, as I need to add more detail to this head. And so that way I'll protect the body from my palm and smudging my drawing. So here's his nose. It's a little sort of like a sideways C. And to that we're going to attach his cowl, so his little mask here going all the way around his chin here. I'm going to draw that in a bit better, just like that. Then we're going to finish off the mask that latches on to his, his uh, jawbone. And there's a little bit of a divot here. Well, we're going to retrace this real quick. We're going to go back down later on. So I'm going to retrace this line as I'm going to keep that. I'm going to split down the nose, back to the other ear. And then here are little triangles on the edge here. So we're going to triangle that out. There you go, just like that. All right, now we're going to add uh, eyebrows, eyebrow shape. And on that eyebrow, we're going to add almond shapes. So, you know, a little curve here to represent the eye. Now, we're going to have to color around that eye later on. And we have to be careful to keep it nice and white in there, right? So we're going to add some little folds here to because he's, he's scowling, he's angry, or, or coming right at you, then we want those scowl lines right there. Let me retrace the head a little bit. And then we're going to add a mouth here. So all we need to do is draw a rectangle with a little bit of a curve in it. So here's our rectangle. So he's got clenched teeth. 
He's sort of like gurring at us. I wouldn't want a Wolverine running at me this way, but this is what we're going to draw. So here's his bottom lip, the little uh, folds in his cheeks here. And we're going to add a little bit of a, a line down the mouth. So this is the, the teeth separation or tooth separation. We're going to add a few lines on either end, which represent the details of the teeth. All right, a little bit of a nostril. Okay, so now we're going to color this whole part in all the way down. I'm going to accelerate that. A lot of people say, Paolo, you draw too quickly. And guys, I totally understand that. But because you're on YouTube, you can pause this at any time and catch up. And that's what I hope you are doing at home. See this little space that I'm leaving here, nice and light? It's to represent reflection. That's important. And now we're going to erase the eye out a little bit because I find the eye too dark. I'm going to make a white here and then retrace the contour line of that eye. There we go. Okay, so this is the gray area that is very important that we leave a little bit of a lighter gray. So it looks like a reflection on his cheeks. And I'm going to color this in a little bit darker. And then we're going to color in the right side too. So like I said earlier, click the pause button on YouTube or on my website, no matter where you are watching this, to catch up to my drawing. And once again, we're going to leave a little white space, well, a light gray space underneath his right eye as well. So this area here will make it a nice light gray. Just like that, so it looks like a reflection. Now we're going to erase the eye there too, make the eye just a little bit bigger, wider. That's why I love this eraser. It's an awesome eraser. There we go. Color it around the eye, nice and black. The cheek there. Awesome. Leaving a little bit of a white space where the eyebrow is too. And I think we're going to erase all around here. Make this nice and clean around the, the mask. There's still some foundation lines that can be seen, so we're going to just clean that up around the head as well. Okay, sometimes I use the hand technique. The hand technique is really just to, uh, you know, give you an idea that I've been erasing, but I'd like to show you how I erase. This line here represents the stitch line of his mask, and we're going to add a little bit of shading to his forehead to show that this is this part is covered by the light, right? It's, it's hidden, and so it should be dark. Same thing here towards his uh, eyebrows should be a lot darker. There we go. I'm going to add a few uh, darkened lines here at the nose. Awesome. Then we're going to start coloring in and working in on his shoulders and whatnot. So let's draw the trapezius contour line here. The trap muscles over here. Make it nice and dark. Just like that. And then we're going to add some muscle lines here. So this is the deltoid. Deltoid is made of multiple muscles. And we should be able to see all those uh, muscle lines in there. And it should attach to the pec muscle on the side there. But let's split this up a little bit more. All right. <clears throat> We're going to add a darker line for his clavicle. And we're going to make the separation here on the chest like that. We're gonna see, we can see every fiber of his chest muscles as he's uh, flexing and coming towards us. We're going to deepen the groove between his trapezius muscle and his uh, clavicle. So we're going to color that in. Make it nice and dark in here underneath his chin. And make it a little bit darker here at the bottom part of this muscle. All right, all right, our Wolverine's coming along. So we're gonna draw the right side now, just like we did on the left side. Deltoid, and separate that off a little bit better. Darken that in here. And there should be fibrous muscles here. Same thing on where the uh, the muscles attached to the, the bone, there should be like fibers, you know, lines coming across. Let's draw a tricep, a bicep line, and a separation to the bicep like this. And by the way, guys, if you really like my drawings and you'd like to own them, you can actually get them on your own personal t-shirt. Uh, if you go to my website, which is mentioned at the top, drawingwithpaolo.com, you can find the boutique, the online boutique, and purchase these drawings. And so, uh, if you'd like to encourage me, please go ahead. That'd be uh, much appreciated.
and let's continue on with our drawing. So this is the suit line, and as you can see, I'm curving that line a little bit so that it's following the body uh, curves, right? So our body's not flat. And this guy is supposed to look like he's got mass. And so his, mus his muscles are rounded and so on and have mass. So the costume curves have to follow that. Just like this shadow on his trap has to follow the curve of his muscle. And that's where we give some realism to the whole thing. All right, so I'm going to shadow this on. And this I'm leaving a little bit of a white uh, line there, which allows to create a sheen, a reflection on his suit. And I'm just going to color everything in here. Nice light gray. Because this is the dark brown part of the suit suit line over here. Color this part in nice and gray as well. And a lot of peck uh, separation here. Same thing on the left side. Just like that. And then uh, we'll do the abdominal muscles just like this. And coming across. On the other side. There we go, we'll add a few uh, rib muscles here and ribs coming onto the side. There's a lat, latimus dorsi, back muscles that come out to the side. That's what, give, that's what gives people their width, their, how wide they are, their lat muscles, the, the muscles that flare out, sort of like wings on, e on either side, underneath the arms. Now let's see if I can reposition my sheet properly, we'll add a nice dark shadow here underneath this pectoral muscle. We'll color that in nice and dark. It will give more mass to my muscles, sort of like what we did with Superman a few weeks ago. And I'll zigzag this part here to make a little bit of a, a uh, gradient, if you will. A few more muscle lines. And then, of course, there's a different color of, of suit of this area. So this part will be darkened, but lighter, right? So because this is supposed to be sort of like a beige. I'm going to make this a little bit lighter. I may change that later on. I'm actually working as, this, as if I was inking, and then sometimes I keep forgetting that I have a pencil in my hand. <laughs> so we can actually uh, draw really nice gradients. So I might actually do that. So I might just color in a nice gradient rather than thinking about comic books here. So here's our uh, left peck, and we'll do the same thing, color that in nice and dark. Just like that. And I think I will add that gradient. So I'm just gonna shade in, make a nice little gradient from bottom to top, going lighter and lighter as we go up, and darker as we go down. I'm gonna color this part in too. I don't like the cross hatching in there, so we're just gonna color all that in. There we go. We'll do the same thing on the left side here. And this is where there's an attach to the, the shoulder, so we need to make that dark here too. And then lighten that up underneath here. All right. And then, of course, the gradient going up. So we need to make this lighter and lighter as we move up. As we're coloring up, we need to make it lighter so that it looks like the light is falling into shadow. Light is dropping away, and then we're going into shadow. All right. So the treatment we've given our pectoral muscles need to be applied to the shoulders as well. And so there's a little trick for this. Let me just color this in a little bit more. OK, so what we're going to do so we're going to color a circle, or a curve like this, and color inside the curve. Uh, curve again, color inside the curve. And there should be somewhat of a gradient working your way down. Okay, So curve it, then the gradient, down, curve it, gradient, down. And that gives mass, gives volume to our muscle. So that's what we want to do. We want to make it nice and voluminous, or I don't even know how to pronounce that. Sorry, guys. <laughs> and we're going to color this top part here. I think the... I did the right shoulder better than the left one. I didn't. I don't have those dark lines at the top, which is it's okay. You know, as you're drawing, you can erase stuff if you want to, or you can just keep going. In my case today, I'm just going to keep going. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to show you guys that it doesn't matter if you make a mistake. So what? I'm having fun drawing. I'm having fun with you guys. That's what counts. When you draw, have fun. All right. So these curves down here for the abs, we're going to be doing the same thing. Curve, color in. Curve, color in. Curve, color in. Same thing repeated. And even here, there's some drop shadow from the top muscles onto the bottom muscles. So we need to color that stuff in like this too. Okay. And remember that the costume has two colors. So this end here, well, this is where his costume is open. We can see skin here. So we'll just put a little circle 
onto the old Wolverine costume, and we're going to beige this out a little bit. So imagine a nice beige color here, light gray. Same thing for his mask at the top, should be a light beige. So a little bit of a gray. Like that. And we're going to work on his belt. So his belt is an oval. Well, there's multiple belts. Wolverine has like a belt buckle, has an X-Men belt, has a you know, a whole bunch of different varieties that we've seen throughout the years. In my case today, I'm going to draw the oval with the X in it. So we're going to erase that part inside there. We're going to add a thickness to that belt buckle and then draw sort of like a, a metallic finish to it. If you've been following my drawings, you've seen a lot of metallic finishes. So this is sort of what we do is a light gray, a, a bright a light gray, dark gray, and so on. And on top of that, we're going to add our letter X. So here's one side of the X, and here's the second side of the X there, because he is an X-Man. And then we're going to erase all around here. We're going to clean up that body part. So let's add hands. I think the hands of Wolverine are super important. So here's what I'm going to draw on this side. I'm going to follow this curve and add uh, his knuckles, and they'll work into his hand like this. And you would draw this way if you're comfortable drawing hands, right? So I'm just going at it, but essentially they're just sausage shapes. See, they're just really nice long ovals, but I can see that in my head, so I'm just going to draw those out automatically. And, and the right hand, I'll show you what I mean by that. I'll draw it in the way that you can draw it if you're not used to drawing hands. Just going to finish off the thumb here, just like that. Okay, so on the right side, let's do it the way I see it. So I'm going to draw ovals. I need four ovals, so on along this curve, I'm going to draw ovals. So here's one oval, two ovals, three ovals, and one more. So these are his four fingers, but now I need to add the detail to that. So I need to retrace around it to really make flesh it out, make it, out, make it to look like a hand. Like this, and then I'm going to curve it around over every finger, and I need to make it less ovally because fingers are not, aren't really sausages, right? They, they have, and like, look, if you look at your own hand, you'll be able to know how to draw your own. Okay? Use your hand, use a friend's hand to to see what it looks like. You have to pay attention to nature and, and real life around you to draw properly. And that's not cheating. You are allowed to do that, right? The more you look at things, the better you get at it um, when you draw at it. So the more you look at things and draw them, the better you're capable of drawing on your own. So let's erase these parts here. I'm going to draw the uh, forearm on this side as well. So here's Wolverine's forearm. The forearms contain the claws. A secret weapon. I don't know that's a secret anymore, but all right. So here is where we're going to start drawing the claw, and this is the toughest part of the drawing. Here's the claw coming out, and it's coming towards us, so it's sort of difficult to draw it this way. So we're going to draw another one coming out this way, just like that. Nice curve. We're going to erase inside there later, and then this one should come out here. Okay, well, I, I made it a little bit more, I made it too much to the left. It should come out more to the right, but that doesn't matter. Let's, let's draw this side. We're going to make them a bit longer on this side because maybe we can see they're more tilted towards the, the sky a little bit. Nice long claws. There we go. And I've, I've spaced these out a little bit better. They're on the right side. The right side is a little bit too short. And now these lines inside here, we need to erase them because these claws are not transparent. They're made of steel or adamantium. So we need to erase that stuff inside there and retrace the outlines. For this. And notice I'm still using my paper technique so that I'm not smudging my drawing as I'm working. Right, here are the outlines, the claws. I need to curve this out like that because this is where I'm drawing where uh, those little uh, outlets on his gloves are, which allow his claws to pop out. Imagine if he didn't, didn't have those little outlets at the end of his gloves, well, he'd have holes all over his gloves all the time. You have to change gloves every day. Yeah, so I'm not too happy about this, but you know we'll keep it like that for the moment. It doesn't really matter. I'm not looking for perfection here. I'm helping you guys out learning how to draw. So let's draw these little outlets again. Those little ovaly shapes are made of metal as well, and maybe adamantium, who knows? And now we're gonna color in some shapes, some shadows here to our our uh, chest area. Same thing here for the abdominal muscle. Make sure that this shadow here is lighter because it's a different colored part of the costume. And here I'm going to go ahead and color in these parts. Now keep in mind I could stop right now. I, could, I wouldn't have to fill this part in 
but I feel like adding some nice detail and, and shadowing is pretty cool this way. It gives a more realism to my character. That's what's cool about drawing with pencil is you can actually make all these nice shadows and lights and darks. It does a really good job. All right, so let's add some sh shading to this bicep and tricep muscle. Once again, same technique, curve and then color down. A little bit of a zigzag as a, as a uh, gradient. There we go, color underneath here. Get darker to push these things back. Same thing on the right side. So, you know, I could, I could be actually drawing a whole arm first, then going on to the other one. But I like going from one to the other. So it's sort of like building uh, in progress. So I'm just taking my time. When I do one bicep, I'll do the other one. Uh, a lot of people will actually just do the whole arm, and that's okay too. Now, here's a tough part as well as coloring the gloves in. So we're going to make them nice and dark. But what we want to do is make sure that we don't color across the whole fingers in a sense that we lose the separation between each finger. So I want to make sure that I keep each individual finger drawn in there. And if I were to make everything black, then it's possible that I actually lose those individual fingers and those details that I've drawn in. So I'm going to leave a little bit of a white space between each finger or make that space nice and dark so that there's still a separation between the fingers and the lines in the fingers. I wouldn't want to lose those fingers and make it just a big black mass. Let's color in our thumb, and I'm going to leave a little bit of a sheen there, a reflection, light reflection on the thumb. And so this side, I'm going to speed that up a little bit, but it's the same thing. As I color, I want to make sure that I leave the separations between the fingers, and I'm leaving little white spaces there so that we can actually see the fingers that are drawn in. All right, so let's uh, attack the, uh, the speedo part of this suit. So let's draw out the outlines here, add a few folds here to that piece of material and draw in the muscles to his legs, like that, his thigh muscles. There's a few, he's pushing hard to come at us, so scary as that may sound, his legs are flexing pretty good, so we need to make these legs look super muscular. Now, I'm not one to draw, you know, when, when I don't believe in the, the superhero that when he's relaxed, his muscles are flexing as well. Sort of like the Superman I drew last time. I mean, that doesn't really make sense. But muscles are super fibrous when they're in motion, when they're flexing, when they're strong and powerful and pushing on things. That's when you should see all this, these muscle fibers. And so with this shading and uh, coloring in like this, it really looks like that muscle is three-dimensional. And all I'm doing is using a little zigzag pattern to fill in uh, in between the muscles. It looks a lot more realistic. All right, on the side of the legs here, coming out of the boots, uh, there are these little winglets that are just like the top of his head. And I really like Wolverine because of that. It actually creates a great balance in the drawing where the, his head has those ears coming out and his boots have the same thing. It's really cool uh, the way that looks. It's a nice balance in the design. All right, so now we're going to color in this part of the costume. We're going to make it nice and dark, as black as his mask. But what we want to do is leave a little bit of white areas. And so I'm going to leave a little bit of a white space here on the far left. And maybe three quarters down, I'm going to leave another white space. I could stop here, but I'm going to make it a little bit thinner. Leave that little white area here and color that in a nice light gray. Okay, so that looks like there's a reflection. And we're going to erase the belt inside here, make it cleaner, like a nice white belt, which represents maybe a red or something like that. If you want to color that in too, you can. I'm not going to draw belt loops, so I'm going to just leave it like that. I need a separation here between the bicep and the costume. And here too. Now, we need to draw in Wolverine's hairs. Listen, he's got hairy arms. He's a Canadian, so he needs to protect himself from the winter. You didn't know he was Canadian, did you? Well, he's got arms just like me. Well, probably not as muscular as mine, but <laughs> uh, definitely as hairier than mine, or maybe as hairy as mine. I've been getting emails, Paolo, why are your arms so hairy? Well, because I'm a man, I won't shave my arms. And uh, because it's to protect me against our Canadian winters. It gets really cold here sometimes. Um, so yeah, I like Wolverine for his hairy arms, and that's why we put hairs on his arms right now. So you can see I did that little, uh, little shots with my pencil. Creates that hairiness. And now we're going to add a bit more detail to his left leg, which is back, right? This, he's pushing on it, so it's away from us. And therefore, we need to use shading here. We're going to color this whole thing in real quickly. 
and we're going to use a zigzag pattern here to fill in in between each one of those fibrous muscles but we also need to add a drop shadow onto his leg so over here we're going to color in that drop shadow and you're going to see that this sort of pushes the leg back a little bit and it looks like the body is producing a shadow on the leg and that's exactly what we want we want that realism there and all this stuff we can erase and clean up get rid of this stuff this line there don't need that and I'm going to start erasing for reflections on the suit and this, I'm going to use my uh, pencil eraser here and just erase white lines on the costume so it looks like reflections little zigzags here and there okay and the next part is don't forget the reason why we're drawing Wolverine today is to draw rain and so our character is drawn now I can draw rain and there's really two ways to do this we can color the background and I'm gonna do here real quickly remember you can click on pause and catch up so I'm just gonna color this whole background first it's really to show you a technique and then I'm gonna use this paper towel and rub my pencil into the paper and so I'm gonna make this all nice and dark with a nice soft tone and you can see finger marks and stuff in, in there and that's great because it actually looks like clouds if we can see the sky in the background for example this looks like dark clouds and so this is a really cool technique is one way of drawing rain I'll show you two ways of drawing rain today and I'll explain what really sells rain then I'm gonna use my eraser here and pull lines pull lines across just like that making white lines and this is the rain falling now to make it look really realistic you need to make different angles in those lines. You can't have all 45 degree angle lines. You need to make different angles crisscrossing them, sort of like this, because the wind, the uh, drop project, uh, trajectory, all that stuff is different for each drop. So we need to make it, sell it, make it look real. We can even make little droplets like this, little spots here and there that looks like rain. But what really sells the rain, guys, is the way the rain hits your character. So we're gonna erase certain areas here going to erase parts of our character yes we're destroying Wolverine a little bit so I'm gonna erase areas and everywhere I erase is where water droplets are hitting my character and that's what sells the real look of, of rain it's not the white lines I made although that does help but this is what sells it so I'm gonna add splashes and all I'm doing is little you know zigzaggy lines looks like splashes you can always look up splash on YouTube and uh, you might find some really cool stuff or milk splash and you can redraw what you see so I'm gonna add little circles here and there little dots here and there and this stuff really looks like the rain is hitting his body we're gonna do some here on his arm okay and the rain is sort of falling diagonally so it's hitting his uh, right side of the body but there should be on there should be rain on his pecs and on his head and so on and don't forget that rain sort of uh, drips down so we can have some sort of running water here on his chest and on his head and on his blades so let's do this bicep here we're going to add more water just dripping down so he's pretty wet so we're going to add this stuff like this and the same thing on his uh blades here we're going to add some water dripping and we can have a nice drop coming right off of this one so just like, a, like this Ooh, like that nice drop and circles here and there and don't forget his legs so we're gonna speed up this process a little bit you get the idea so we're gonna speed up the leg part and I'm going to show you how to draw the other side of rain so on the other side of Wolverine we're gonna draw the other the other way of I draw rain I'm gonna color this part in a little bit where it's darker where it's where it's darker it's wetter right so as far as clothing is concerned and so here's the other way we can draw rain it's just lines with our pencil and remember keep those lines you don't want the lines to be uh, parallel you really want them to crisscross each other because that's how rain really falls we can add dots and things and we're just going to pull lines down and across and that's that guys i really hope you like my drawing this week it's these drawings are really made for you and i enjoyed drawing them for you so i'm going to wish you a great day and we'll see you in another episode of drawing with paolo guys wolverine for you see you later